All right, hey guys, Mikoshi here. Today I will be discussing um, profit crafting with uh, what in this when this video. So before we get into this video, I just want to explain that by the time you watch this video, the profit craft is probably going to be ruined because a few people are going to do it and it's going to completely mess up the market. But hopefully this video will be a good example for those who are interested in profit crafting, which by the way is like right now is probably the best time in the league to get what's well, the best league to get into because of the hyperinflated prices. Now, um, for I'm, this is not going to be an introduction to all of profit crafting. It's just going to be specifically what I did to profit craft for this specific example. And I think the addition of all the examples I'm going to be pumping out is going to be the best guides for you guys on how to profit craft. So one of the best ways of profit crafting is by making items that are tedious, very long, or that seemingly complicated for either meta build or very niche build. Meta build because there's a lot of players that don't really know how to build works because they're new to it, their favorite content creator made it, they're going to try it, they don't know how to craft it. Or niche because you're pretty much going to be the only uh, crafter and if you're good at it, well, you can control the market. Now, uh, this one is going to be meta crafting for the Deadeye. Uh, as you can see here, it is the most popular with 18% of the population. If you look at the skills, uh, 75, basically three quarter of the whole um, tornado, uh, Deadeye people play tornado shot. So basically 18% three quarter of them, that's 13.5% of the whole population of Path of Exile is actually playing Tornado Shot, which is nuts. And then if you look at the uniques, uh, Venter's Gamble is at 62%, which is an MF item. Um, so 62% of 13%, 13.5. Uh, so let's say uh, basically one in, tw one in 13 players in all of Path of Exile's 3.23 is currently playing Magic Find Tornado Shot. So you're gonna look at uh, the build um, you'd like to see maybe not like the low end. Let's take a look at them. And you're gonna look at their build. So uh, that is not what a magic find character looks like. Um, okay, so let's take a look right here. That is definitely not how it looks. Oh my God, please help me. Okay, well, oh my God. Sorry, I did not prepare this in advance. Uh, okay, so this does look like a magic fine character. So you're gonna take a look, their bows. Well, you know that the bows for uh, bow players are as the most important thing. So they're gonna be buying better bows and selling their better, their, their shittier bows um, for often exactly the market value or a bit lower. This means there's gonna be so much competition and it is not worth to compete in the bow section, uh, especially if you're on the new side, right? Because it's too volatile. The Quiver, um, definitely a good profit crafting. Uh, like, I don't have anything to say. A very good profit crafting. The, uh, well, the chest, you can't really do something. It's a unique. Uh, uniques, you can do profit crafting with uniques, which I will be making a video on. But uh, right now, it is uh, not the point of the video. You can take a look at their gloves. Uh, very, very good profit crafting. Clusters, very tedious, very long. Nobody wants to do them. Very good profit crafting. And helmet, same thing. Well, this one is a... Mag is a um, it's a, uh, how to say, that's a mirror tier item. But um, usually what players, what you're gonna want to is to make an item that players will only have three or two versions of. What do I mean by that is they're gonna buy their item once on the low end, they're gonna buy a high end, and then they're gonna keep it all the way through until they go mirror tier. Bows, it's not like that. Bow players are per, per league, they're gonna have what? Five, six, maybe eight bow, like well, eight is a lot, but I have, I think per league when I make my bow character, six to seven bows per character, right? So that's too many uh, bows. Like, yes, a lot of people are gonna buy, but a lot of people are gonna buy and then sell it. So you don't want that. You wanna have an item that people are gonna buy maybe two or three times in all of their build. And the best ones are gloves, amulet, um, clusters, and helmet for magic find. So now the video I wanted to talk about is going to be the helmet specifically. It is hyperinflated, uh, as you can see right now, there are pretty much two ways of making a magic fine helmet. Um, the implicits are the same, mana reservation, reduced mana cost. Uh, you have 60% increased rarity uh, as a fractured. You have life, uh, increased rarity of item found, that's suffix and prefix. So those are two mods together. And then they have physical damage taken as. Now the difference is one has intelligence, the other one has uh, mana reservation efficiency. But as you can see, they all fetch for hundreds and hundreds of the binds and when you look at this item you might tell yourself it looks easy to make and uh, yes sir it is easy to make however it is uh, slightly tedious 
But yeah, so you might tell yourself when you look at prices and you're like, wait, that is way too expensive. Well, that's a good, tr it's a good like way of knowing, hey, I might be able to profit craft here. Now, there are, in, there are multiple ways of profit crafting. You can make a full item or you can make a half item. What do I mean by half item? Is you can buy the basic item, make it that people can buy it and then craft. What do I mean by that is by, let's say, the fractured here, right? The fractured item, that means somebody fractured that item. So there's two steps. There's You buy the item without the fracture, you fracture the item, and then you make the final item. Or you could just buy the item, fracture it, sell it, or you can buy the fractured item, make it good, and sell it. So there's three ways of doing it. If you look at the price of just the fractured item, uh, it fetches for 175 That is not a max roll, so let's say max roll. Uh, 190, let's say at least 200 divines um, for a 60%, okay? That is a lot of currency. Now you see the difference between 200 and 320, 350, that's already uh, whopping 150 divines. That is 75% uh, difference, right? Now you would have to calculate, well, you would have to know how to craft that item and check, hey, how much currency am I making? On the 150, if it costs me 80 divines to make, well, I'm making a 70 divine profit per item. Is it worth it? Definitely, you know, jump on it. Now, it would depend how long it would take. If it takes you three hours to make the item, well, then maybe not. But if it takes you 30 minutes, 70 divines, that is massive, okay? Now, um, the next step is you're gonna look at if it is not fractured. So you're gonna search, You ha first of all, you need to make sure the item level. Um, if you go for the intelligence, you need at least level 85 to be able to roll a tier one intelligence. If you go for the reduce uh, the increased mana reservation efficiency, you need at least level 81 to be able to have the physical damage taken as fire. So just make sure the item level is the right one. Um, so you're gonna add it here, either 81 or 85. Make sure it's not a fractured item. You had a limit and you get the mod that you want with the roll that you want. Now. You know magic fine characters are evasion based, so you're gonna want to search for evasion bases, but as you can see on those, a lot of them have actually just armor. Uh, yeah, it's armor based, armor based, evasion based. So okay, well, the prices aren't that exaggerated. They go to 280, but still, it is still a crazy amount of currency. So you can buy pretty much any of the bases um, that is not fractured. And then you're gonna take a look at the fractured, the cost of a fracturing orb. It is, let's say, 30 divines. It is one chance in four to get the fractured item. So that is 120 divs. The base itself sells for, we checked, at least 200 divines. So mathematically speaking, you are making a 80 divine profit by fracturing those items every time. Uh, now, if we just make sure they're all 60. Yeah, you, you basically make 200, 230 divines per item that you fracture. So that's 80 divines on the first, and then on the second step, it might be profitable. Let's say, let's just say it's another 50 divine profit. You make a total of 130 profit. Now let's say the first step is 80 divine profit, but the second is 10 divine profit. Is it worth it? No. Nah. Uh, and you're, you're gonna have to calculate that by checking the odds. Now, both steps do seem to have a lot of profit. So what you would do is you would buy one of those, um, you would buy one of those items and then you would buy some of the fracturing orbs. Now let's, uh, sorry, let's go into my hideout. I have prepared just that. I don't know where, um, right here. So what you want to do for a fracturing orb is you want the fracturing orb is fracture random rare with at least four modifiers. If it says at least four modifiers, you want exactly four modifiers to be able to have a higher chance. Now, some of these modifiers uh, some of these items have six mods. Thing is, if you use an annulment orb, you might uh, accidentally take off one of your the modifier that you want. The thing is, because it's a helmet, you can actually use um, something called Eldritch Currency. As you can see, the rarity of items drop is a suffix. This means we only want to affect our prefixes. By using um, the Eldritch orb, if the Searing Exarch is dominant, remove a prefix. So Searing Exarch is red guy, so we're going to red guy uh, this dude, let's say. We're going to take off the crafting, the remove bench mod. And we are going to annul. 
So now this now has four modifiers. Okay. Now another way. Well, yeah, no, no, let's skip that. So you would try to fracture it and hopefully hit it. Now I'm gonna have nine tries. Let's hopefully hit it. We did not try it. We lost uh, basically 30 divines. You would do the exact same thing right here. So let's hopefully hit it. And we hit it. Boom, you just made 80 divines. That's basically it. I can sell that thing for 80 divines and it will definitely sell. Now you can continue. I was lucky now, it's one in 50. Now, if you continue, there are higher odds of you missing, but the more you do, the more it's going to show the exact odds. You might try 10 first time and it doesn't work. Like it has happened. I've sometimes invested two or three mirrors into profit crafting and it just missed. Um, but the more I invested, the more the odds became, well, the math, you know, same thing here. We would um, remove, sorry, we would remove the, the crafted modifier. Now, what's really interesting about this item is it has a tier one knife and um, a the mod that we want. So if we remove, uh, let's just make sure that it is lesser. Okay, no, we need to make it lesser. Sorry, I am very sorry. We need to make all of those lesser and this needs to be grand. So you would annul and hopefully hit something. Yeah, not take off the life. Now you basically have one chance in four to get the 80 divine profit or if you fracture life, you could probably sell it for, it's definitely gonna cost less, you're definitely gonna sell it for less than 30 divines, so you would be losing currency, but you wouldn't be losing that much currency. So let's just try it again. We break the item, so we lost another 30 divines. So right now we are up 20 divines because we lost 30, 30, and then we won 80, okay? And you would continue, and mathematically speaking, you will one day make profit. You will make profit. We lost here and then... Uh... Wow, okay, well, boom. So we got our item here. You're lucky or not. You made profit or not. Okay. Um, so the next step is going to be crafting the actual item. For that one, I am going to make it in a craft of exile because I just... Um, well, for multiple, well, also because it's a lot easier to explain and showcase. So let's import the item. We are going to paste the, we are going to paste our item right over here. And we're going to add it to the build. Now, the item is level 85. If you look at both ways, um, one way will be easier than the other. The increased mana reservation efficiency of that is going to be easier to make than the intelligence, uh, but we're going to go for the intelligence because it fetches for a higher price. So let us do that. Step number one is going to quality at 30%. We're going to be using the perfect fossil um, because this is a uh, fractured item, a fractured modifier. It will not change. So you will change it up until you hit 30%. Once you hit 30%, our next step is we want to finish up our suffixes. If you look at the helmets, what did the helmets have? The helmets as a suffix had rarity and then uh, mana reservation efficiency. So you would, um, sorry, we're going to go for uh, intelligence. So it's going to be intelligence and rarity of item found. So there are many, many ways of going to, to, make, to make this actual item. But I will make uh, I will showcase a simple way. We're gonna go for the essences of spite, and we're gonna roll intelligence, which will guarantee intelligence, and we will roll until we hit rarity as a suffix. Um, that might take a time. Here we got tier four, so you're gonna roll until tier one. Okay, we got it. So our suffixes are done. Now, this is going to be the tedious part, is a, we need to finish up our prefixes. So we have access to Eldritch Crafting. So to solely affect the prefixes, the red guy needs to be uh, the highest tier. Now, this one doesn't have any implicit, so we're going to go for the lesser. And then you are going to either exalt. It's less expensive to go exalt a null. Um, so you exalt a null. Oops, sorry. You're going to exalt an all, and you're going to exalt an all until you get rarity of items found, 
and life, okay? Now, depending on the currency you have and depending on what you're aiming for, you could settle or you could not settle until you hit tier one. Uh, that is going to be the very tedious profit, uh, um, tedious part, sorry. And that is one of the reasons why nobody wants to make those. Oops. Okay, so now I got the rarity, but I got my prefixes full, so I would have to annul and hopefully not hit a rarity. I hit rarity, sadly, so I would have to continue rolling. Alright, I hit rarity. Hopefully, I hit the life. I did not. I would have to annul yet again. Uh, but let's say you annul <laughs> until you were lucky. Oh my god, bro. That is four times in a row. And you, let's say you exalt your life, okay? So you finally hit it. You are happy. Uh, you're going to cry and uh, everything is great. You just um, nearly finished a hundred and a hundred something profit craft. Now, as you can see, uh, the this part is extremely tedious right so you would have to calculate how much time would it take and how much currency would it take to get to exactly the tiers that i want and is it worth it let's say it takes um a thousand tries and it costs let's say what 40 divines and you only make a difference profit of 70 divines well do you uh, well well maybe let's say 50 divines it costs and you make a profit of 60. For 10 divines, are you going to really click a thousand times, buy a thousand orbs, and st break your head for a thousand clicks? Or would you go back to only making fractured? You'd probably go back to making only fractured. Now, I'm going to say it again. Once this video is out, <laughs> you are probably not going to be able to profit craft this because somebody is going to do it before you. But um, free to you to try. Then you would go for taken as in your bench. And you'd go and craft physical damage taken as, make it 8. And boom, those are the prefixes that cost so much. Uh, basically, 340 to what, 450 divines it sells. Now, the implicit uh, is very simple. What you want is you want the reduced mana cost of attacks and you want the uh, mana reservation efficiency. Now, if you look at the tiers, this is the highest tier, tier 12, and this is the tier 4. Um, how, to know, how, how do I know those tiers is basically right here. 12 right here, and then you would take the reduced mana at 23 or 24. So that's what you're aiming for. So how do we, how do, we do those? You're going to, first, your goal is to get the highest, this one is tier 1, the other one is tier 4. So you're going to go for the tier, the highest tier that you want first, and you're going to roll for it. You could roll for exceptional Icor, but that is way too expensive. So I suggest Grand Icor or even Greater Icor. So you would roll until you hit the lower tier. Okay. And the lower tier for this one with a Grand is going to be tier four. So let's say you, you, you know, you spam, 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 spam. Okay. We got it. We got it. We got it. You spam until you hit tier four. Then you would use something called an Orb of Conflict. Now the Orb of Conflict uh, makes one of the tier higher and reduces the other one. And I think the higher, if the, mod is higher tier it has a higher chance of lowering so you'd use an exceptional amber on the other one which is tier three and then you would orb of conflict to make your reservation efficiency tier one so this is tier three tier four unlucky tier three tier two tier one boom we got it now the last step is going to be the last implicit you can go exceptional grand amber but as we can see the difference between grand amber exceptional is not worth it for one percent so you would roll until you hit um the reduced mana cost so you would roll 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 and it might take 
maybe 50, 100 tries, right? So that is going to be um, what decides really depending on your budget if you're going to go greater, grand, exceptional, okay? But let's say you roll it and you finally hit it. You check this on trade and it is exactly, exactly, exactly the same thing. Now the, mice, the base might differ and sometimes the base, the base might actually make something more expensive. However, if we take a little, well, I mean, there's, it's not a lot that exists there. Right, that is, uh, oh, that is reservation, sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's just a few that exists, but yeah, they're selling for 300. Um, and you just made a 300 divine helmet just very easily. So now this, this video, as I said, is not a crafting guide. Uh, it is just an example of how profit crafting can work and how you can profit craft, okay? So there's multiple steps in profit crafting and you need to keep an eye out on the meta or on niche builds. And yeah, so hopefully this example did help. Uh, if you like this type of video, please let me know as I might make some more. And I, may, I might just make a you know more polished type of guide on how to profit craft with you know, examples and explanations of the mechanics and, you know, the computing behind it. So, yep, yeah, let me know. And if you have any criticism or comments, you can let me know in the Discord or in the video comments. Have a nice one and see you another time.